Hello and welcome to the Young Author Pod. And today we will learn about the importance of social distancing. On March 11, 2020, the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 as pandemic. Let us understand what happens when an infectious outbreak such as COVID-19 hits our community. This graph shows the y-axis as the number of cases and the x-axis as time. The spike in the number of cases means many people are getting sick all at once. In such a situation, there wouldn't be enough hospital beds or the healthcare workers for everyone who needs them and there will be proportionate spike in the number of deaths due to insufficient public health measures in place. Your country's healthcare system will be overwhelmed and at capacity. Let's understand the events that lead to this overwhelming surge in patients. Every hospital has a limited capacity and number of beds. Think of this as the number of beds at your local hospital at any given time. Few beds are already occupied by patients receiving treatment for other ailments like trauma or myocardial infarction. Few beds are daily occupied and few patients are daily discharged, so balance is maintained. So this is a healthy person in the COVID-19 affected area who decides to go out as usual. He takes a public bus to go to the office and catches COVID-19 virus from a co-passenger on the bus. But he doesn't feel sick right away and he might not feel sick for several days. Once the person gets infected, the symptoms develop about 5 days later and this is called the incubation period. So later in the evening, this guy decides to go to a local event and unknowingly infect a few more people around him. Most of these people will be mild cases, but few might be elderly with other illnesses and weak immunity who will develop a severe disease and might eventually have to go to the hospital. But these four who are infected but don't feel sick will again go out and on the local train, into the office and to a cafe or a bar hanging out after work infecting several more people unknowingly. One fourth of whom will need to go to the hospital. Over a very short period of time, this process of people going to the hospital multiplies, causing more and more sick people visiting the hospital each day. And soon enough, the hospital is full and then the crisis begins. This spike of severe cases causes more and more avoidable deaths. This surge in the hospital admissions might be made up of only severe cases, but it is generated by the people who didn't feel sick spreading the disease in public. Means people who can do the most to avoid the deaths is this guy and this guy is all of us. Now let's see how social distancing including quarantine and community lockdown helps this situation. Usually the virus spreads when people cough or sneeze and tiny droplets containing the virus are released. These droplets can land on another person's mouth, nose or eyes or land on a surface where virus can live and that allows the virus to enter the new person either directly or when the person touches that surface and touches their mouth or eyes or nose. When a person infected with COVID-19 virus travels to a non-affected area, it's called an imported case. And if they start to spread the disease to the household contacts and those around them, then it's called local transmission. Since it's usually limited to an isolated area, hence it can be easily traced back to the original infected person. 
However, when people begin to contract the disease without a clear source, it's called community transmission. To prevent or contain the community transmission, most important measure is social distancing, like shutting down the schools, cancelling events to prevent large gatherings, avoiding public transport, and most important, staying at home. The main goal is to avoid person-to-person -person transmission. In areas of community transmission, Anyone with mild symptoms, regardless of the diagnosis, should self-quarantine in their home. This means staying at home, avoiding meetings, and avoiding traveling or attending any events. If these symptoms worsen, they should call their local doctor or the clinic. For people who live with others, they should wear a mask and they should self-quarantine in a room. Use a separate bathroom if possible and avoid sharing household items like bedding and eating utensils. To slow down the spread of the virus, you need to act as if you already have it. By practicing social distancing, you decrease the chances of both getting the disease and spreading it. This gives your healthcare system a chance to efficiently cater the sick ones in the hospitals and when they can work efficiently so there are lesser deaths and much better outcome. This is called flattening the curve. Be a responsible citizen, practice social distancing and hand hygiene. So this was all about social distancing. If you like this video, please share it as much as you can. Don't forget to like this video, comment and subscribe to the Young Orthopod. We'll be back with another video in orthopedics. See you soon.